So there's an improvement that we could be making to the state of the current code, uh, particularly re relating to this API that we're using to convert currency. And the reason for this is as follows. If, for example, we are converting US dollars to GBP and GBP to USD, what we're doing is we're joining these values, if you remember, uh, and then we're multiplying uh, the one unit by however much. But what happens if, let's say, we have lots of the same currency? So let's do one, two, three, four, five. So let's do 11 of these. Now, you might not think this is a problem. Let's say we wanted to convert a couple of different values here. Let's just enter a few different ones. OK, so in this case, we're converting uh, multiple values with the same currency. That's fine. You may want to do that. That's a completely um, sensible way to go ahead and, and convert all these values. But the only problem is the API that we're specifically using here uh, for multiple queries, which we've already looked at, only supports up to 10 or, or 10 um, queries. So this basically means then that if we just turn on compact to Y, um, when we hit the uh, convert method, what we're doing here is we're taking all of the conversions, so that will mean 11 of these and we are we're constructing a query which is then sent through to the api so that's 11 of these things here so let's see what happens when we paste this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven times we get too many pairs maximum of 10 is supported by the free version so this does not make sense because all we're doing is we want to find out the conversion for this currency regardless of how many times we are calling it in here because we already know uh, when we do usd to gbp that we get the one value back and then we multiply it so the problem here is then obviously we can't do this so what we need to do is we need to modify the currency converter to not return or not add the same currency conversion key more than once if it already exists. So we need to make a, a few modifications here. This will obviously depend on the API that you're using, but if you are specifically using this API or another API that limits you, you're going to need to make modifications to your code. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a few changes here. Instead of a query here, I'm going to have a currencies array. So I'm going to replace this string with an array. So we're going to store the currencies within here. And what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this and we're going to write this code again. But this time what we want to do is we want to just use array map. We're not going to implode at this point. So let's say currencies equals array map. So what this will do then for each loop of this closure we're going to add uh, a key to this currencies array. So down here, why don't we do a var dump on currencies and then just kill the page there. So at the moment, if we just return some silly string and we go ahead and refresh, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, of course, we need to pass in the conversions just here and we get the following so we get 11 of these so what we need to do then is in here we're going to return the same thing as we did before so all we're going to do is return c which remember we need to pass as an argument just here zero which is the first one say us dollars or gbp and then we need to pass in the second currency so now we get the following. But obviously this is silly. We don't want to join all of these and then send them across as I demonstrated a moment ago. So what we need to do now is down here, we're now going to form the query and we're going, going to obviously implode the currencies that we've just co uh, collected in that array by a comma. And we can just do a dump on the query and that will give us the following. So we've now got all of these. Again, this is silly. So all I'm going to do is when I'm uh, imploding currencies, I'm also going to use the array unique function. 
And what this will do is it will remove duplicates from that array. So now what's going to happen is when we refresh, we only get one. And we only need one here because when we access this in here, so US dollars to GBP, we get the value of US dollars to GBP back, which we can then multiply when we loop down here, when we build up our results. So this now is enough to do that. Let's see what the results, uh, let's see the result that we get on here. And you can see that we get an array back with 11 uh, items which is what we expect and we can see all of the different currency conversions so we're only making a request once for this but then we're multiplying them for each value that we want and we're returning the correct conversion so this is now going to work even if we have say a completely different uh, conversion so say USB, uh, USD, uh, GBP to USD and let's set that to say 200 when we refresh, we still get that last one. So we get the 313.5 as well as the others. But now in this case, all we're doing is if we just again do a var dump on the query and then kill it there, we're only passing in these two, which means we're still uh, returning the correct information enough for us to build up the results that we see when we actually run that method. So that's just a little tidy up based on that API. It might not be the same for the API you're using, but if it does follow this kind of structure, it's a good idea only to send the data to the API that you actually need in order to calculate the values.